Hey there, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. Today, I'm going to take my first look at the 296T by Bukla and Tip Top Audio, the infamous programmable spectral processor. <laughs> In order to help you understand what the module does, let's start by the bottom. Here we have the signal inputs. You can put something just to the even bands or only to the odd bands or to everything at the same time. On top here we have gain for the even and odd bands and transfer which allows you to send all the envelope followers from the odd or even bands to each other to make some vocoding effects. Then we have the programmed output control. From this output you don't get any effects from the slider. You only can travel through the bands and control them directly from the local program inputs on the bottom. Then you get the attenuator output, which uses the sliders but has no CV control at all. Then the com filter output, which output only the even and odd bands. And finally, the envelope decay time for all the envelope followers that you can see on the top and below the audio out for each band. I have a tiny bit of reverb, and this was a saw wave going straight into the output module. Now here's that same saw wave going here to the all input. As you can split this module, there's three inputs, the all, which I'm using now. Even. And the odd. Which means you can mix two signals here and each is going to go either to the even or the odd band. Let's go back to our saw wave. And let's start to play with those long sliders. From the attenuator output, you can mess around with all those bands. Each of them are fixed bandpass filters. It's really impressive or weird it sounds. When you use only a few of those bands. From this output, the attenuator output, you cannot control the levels here. Now let's have a go at the programmed output. In this one, you can travel between each filter in the bank. And you can open up the area around the center filter. Which make it sound like a very weird bandpass. With a bit of weird steppiness inside. Let's control that.
it is also from this output that you can control individual bands on top of having your center and width parameters. Try to control one of these at audio rate. Mm. Nice texture. One thing I want to try right now as well. Take the even and odd to a stereo output. As I mentioned earlier, you can also patch things to even and odd separately. So let's go with some noise. So mix match. I have the program out on one side and the attenuator out on the other. Really lovely module to interact with. Let's slow down that saw wave to some clicks. is a quite nice synth kind of patch that will properly let you hear the sound of those filters. So we have two VCOs, two sides of a 250AT going to the even and odd. And I'm sort of using this as a low pass filter. With this knob at the minimum, you don't get any sound. I have a cycling envelope from the 281T. That's doing that sort of percussion. And then I have the 245T moving the center. So this sort of sounds like it's a low pass that morphs into a band pass at some point. I love this sound. If you invert the voltage, control voltage, and the program knob, you get some sort of a high pass to band pass thing. Let's go back to what we had before. And one uh, trick that I've just discovered is that by flipping the switches on which 
oscillators transfer its envelopes to the other one, you can do some sort of a drone performance that's it's pretty nice. It's a bit cramped over there, but I mean, on such a big module, it's, it's a bit of a shame that those two s switches are there, but. Just add some FM from one oscillator to the other to make this patch even more organic. Probably listen to this for hours. I also have a clocked quantized random voltage that I've been having fun patching at some different places. It's especially good on the in the higher register. Those sounds are so spectrally separated that it sounds so unnatural that I love it. I stopped this first day with the 296T, I decided to do some vocoding, but you don't have to use a vocoder to make the robot kind of voice. You can do vocoding from anything by anything. I'm just gonna keep this one simple. I have a breakbeat pattern made on the Tracker Mini, getting amplified by the Soft Pop 2 in order to have a bit more juice. And a saw wave. My 258T. Let's change the transfer. Proper vocoding stuff. Love this sound. You can also do both at the same time. Which can sound very good. And also, as we have all these envelope follower output, let's use some of them, Just I'm just going to try, to modulate the pitch of the oscillator that's doing the vocoding. <laughs> but this is good. Oh, 
God, that's awesome. It's also clipping as hell. Let's put some reverb back on it. Sounds like someone playing didgeridoo, playing drums inside a didgeridoo while someone is blowing, a giant probably. That's fun. I love it. Ah, that's horrible and lovely at the same time. It's pretty weird. Switched from uh, saw to sine wave, but with some FM. Oh, God. Bam, bam. <laughs> That's awesome. Some good samples there that I'm going to put on Patreon for anyone supporting over there. If you're not, feel free to go check it out. There's lots of samples from some of the stuff that you can see on this table, plus some many, many, many other stuff. You can also get some teaching from there if you're interested in me teaching you stuff about modular synth, Ableton, other things. I've just been scratching the surface so far. First day I've had this thing. It's the only module in the book line, tip top line, that I had no idea how it worked before using it, except seeing videos of the original Bukla one, mostly from Todd Barton. So I'm pretty happy of how it turned out. I've, I think I understood most of it <laughs> and uh, I'll be digging deeper into this later. So thanks again for watching, like, subscribe, all this go have a look at Patreon. You also can buy some of those things from the affiliate links below, which always helps. Thanks again for your time. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>